All right, so now we are in Illustrator and we have created a new a color version <laughs> of our logo. Here, how have I named it? I named it uh, Carl Assignment 6 Color Vector Logo because this allows us to, to do basically a color fill on the different paths individually. Just like we did in Photoshop to the whole thing, I can do this to individual parts in Illustrator and it will be coded into the EPS. Of course, that makes it a little less versatile once you bring it into Photoshop, right? Now, I made a copy of it. So I have two identical copy layers here. And I, you can't just hit Command-J. In fact, hitting Command-J in Illustrator is really bad because it takes you to something called outline mode, which is hard to get out of. It's just a viewing mode that's annoying. So instead of hitting Command-J to duplicate, you select it all. And I'll actually make another copy just to show you. You select it all. You go to Edit Copy or Command-C. You lock it. This is how layers can help you organize. You turn it off and you make a new layer, and that just guarantees that you're gonna paste into this new layer. And then you say, edit, paste in place. Okay, so now I have three identical copies. Okay, this first one, I'm going to fill with a gradient instead. So if I wanna select all those colored paths, I just click next to it. And I'm going to go to Window. Whenever you can't find something, look under Window. And I'm gonna find Gradient, and I already have it open, it's right here. Now gradient should have, because I'm in a color folder now, should have some different options. It should have the black-white gradient option. Just like in Photoshop that I played with initially. I can make it linear or radial. Radial doesn't quite work because notice that it starts a new circle within each path. That's selected. That's different than Photoshop where radial would be across the whole cutout. Right. But linear could work okay in this. I can set the angle, but I don't set it with a nice little interactive guide. I have to actually type in the angle. And notice that it's setting the gradient separately within each path. All right. So it's just a slightly different interface, different way of thinking about it. Let's do negative 45. All right. So let's try it this way. I can reverse it just by doing this. Right? And that kind of matches what I was doing in Photoshop. There isn't a scale, but I could play with the opacity of it. So if this black is just a little too strong, I could say, okay, take it down to only 70% black right at the edge. Or even 60% black. And it's kind of cool. You can even fade it out to 0% opacity. And that's how you can get soft edges in Illustrator, which kind of makes no sense at all if you think about it, because it's all about cut out paths. But if you make a gradient with a zero opacity edge, it's fading it out like a watercolor strip. Okay, now that's 100%. So if I turn on the layer behind it, the only part that's going to come through with the color is where I dimmed the gradient's opacity a little bit. But I could also take the entire thing and use transparency, which I have open here, and I can just dim the whole thing like you can with layers in Photoshop to adjust the transparency of that gradient. So maybe I like something like that, a little bit more complex colors. All right, so if I like that, but I see it goes a little purple, now what do I do with this middle layer? Well, I can fill it all. Let's lock the other two. I can fill this middle sandwich layer with a gradient, but this time I'm going to do a color gradient. And orange to yellow is just its way of showing you that you can play through different spectrum colors. But I might want to change the, um, the yellow. You, you have full control of each of these. It's a CMYK slider as a default. So I like to mix them here. I might change that. I might change this. I can also just delete one, though I kind of like the super strong yellow. Actually, I'll leave that one. This one, though, I want to change to being more of a blue. So 
So right now, this is what I'm controlling. And I want these kind of California sunset colors. Yeah, why not? Why not keep that? I'll play with the opacity. Now this one just looks dirty now, so I'm going to clean that up. And if you don't like using the sliders, you can always use this. And it kind of shows you how they mix up here, which is nice. They keep improving these, these interfaces within Illustrator. Now this yellow is what's dominating, so let's clean that up. There we go. And then I can add a color if I want. Maybe add a, an orange back in. So there's a lot of playing around. You can move them around. I'm going for a sunset, so let me adjust these a little bit. And I don't like the vertical layer. And you see how it's different in each path, but I'll play with that with my angle. So let's try negative 30, or let's try, um, yeah, that one doesn't work. So let's do negative 45, or I can, negative 45 is just about perfect. But I want to start playing with the opacities a little bit. So first with the red, let's take that down to zero. Okay, now with the, the green, let's take that down to 30. Now with the blue, let's take that down to 50. No, I want more of the blue, so I want that 70. And the green, I want more like 50. Now with the yellow, let's take that down to 70. This brownish color, let's almost get rid of that entirely. There we go. So that's something kind of interesting. By having zero at the edge, let me show you what that does if I turn off everything else. You see how that edge now bleeds out completely. And if I put it on a gray background, you'll see that that comes through. So if you're transparent, it means the backgrounds are coming through. So that yellow is a little too strong. Let's spread that out, and if I want to spread out the yellow more, I can always change its color and dim it. Oh, but I have to select all the paths first. Select its color and dim it. So something like that, and I can widen it out, put another yellow in there. There we go. So that's getting kind of nutty. to show you some of what you can do. And I don't think I have any of these at 100%. Let me make sure of that. I could, but then whatever is underneath doesn't matter. Yeah, so none of them are at 100%. That's what I want. And that red isn't even a factor. So then if I put the one underneath it, I get something like that. And then if I put the gradient over the top of it, I get something like that. And now if that gradient seems too strong, I can play with its overall transparency. Maybe get something like that. All right. So now what else can I do in Illustrator? Well, I can add a stroke around all of it. I can give it all. Um, a white stroke, but I'm going to show you how I think you should do that. So I'm going to choose white as a color. This is an offset, so it shows up on, on black. I'm going to go to the outside. Notice I can't really see anything. 
until I bring it out. And so to bring out everything, I have to unlock everything and select all of them and bring it out over the gray. Okay, but I just want to put the stroke on one on my background layer. And that's just a uniform five point basic white outline stroke and actually works pretty well. But sometimes it can look weird at the points. So what I often do is I'll take that stroke and I'll, uh, instead of making it uniform, I'll make it wavy. And then instead of basic, I'll use a five point oval or even a 10 point oval. And if you're looking for options, you can go to the library here. I like to use artistic calligraphic. And these are your different oval options. So that's a 15 point oval. Let's use a 10 point oval. Yeah, that looks pretty good. And you see how that kind of softens and rounds all the corners, more like what Photoshop does when you add a stroke. Now, if I really like it and I want it to work in scale, because strokes don't scale the same way that fills do, I have to outline the stroke. And this is annoying as anything, but I select it all, and then I go up to Object, Path, Outline, Stroke. And now the stroke, as crazy as they are, are just another fill path, which is better for a variety of reasons that are hard to explain. Okay, so now I can save this first as my color logo AI file. And there are ways to add patterns and textures within vector files as well, but they take up tons of memory. So I like to do that back in Photoshop and then save as an EPS file that you can transfer to Photoshop. Okay. Now I save, I always save my EPS to the desktop and I know they're getting a little crowded here, right? So now I have two EPSs. If I open them up in preview, you'll see them pretty different from each other, right? But those are both created in Illustrator all vector files, infinitely scalable, and not too large. Now if I go back to Photoshop, and I go to my, my color version, I can bring in now my color EPS, and scale it and move it until it matches, which can I think all I needed to do was move it up. So let me try it again. Move it up a little bit more. All right. So now what I can do is I can play with opacity and kind of fade the two together. Like I'm saying, I'm really overdoing it here. It's showing you all the options you have. I can play with a different blending mode. See where those, those colors and those strokes and those in, interior uh, low opacity gradients just affect it slightly. I can put kind of that crazy color in there with pin light and use all the texture from the layer styles underneath. And I kind of like that in terms of it being elemental, you know, I get kind of almost the full spectrum in there a little bit. I could also just do this trick, which is to duplicate my previous layer styles, Command J, and then just move them, move the effects onto the new layer and delete the duplicate I just made. And then instead of having to have the black behind it, I can just play with the overall style opacity. Of the effects. So if I turn them off, there it is. But up here, if I just play with the 